This is Jeff and welcome to Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Um, if the camera's shaking a little bit, it may be because I am freezing this morning. Um, it's lovely and kind of warm in the tropical greenhouse, but outside, unfortunately, um, it's exceedingly frosty. It was very, very cold last night, well below zero, and it doesn't look at the moment as if the sun's going to melt it off. Um, I think there's a few clouds in the sky and it's keeping the frost there. I was due to go out and do some garden jobs this morning, but it's not happening, is it? It's just too, too cold. Um, so what I thought I would do is I would jump on here and do a quick update. Um, a couple of things have happened. It's surprising what changes in a few days. Uh, I'm going to do uh, um, a little bit of a section on how to care for Miltonia spectabilis. Um, I'm learning how to care for it, so I thought, well, I'll do a video on how to care for it and what I've learnt about it uh, and tell you my experiences of it. But before I do, I just want to show you a few things in here that have changed since uh, I last showed you. And I may even take you for a quick trip outside just to have a look at some frosty stuff, which is always cool to look at. Um, so if you want to jump straight to this uh, Miltonia Spectabilis care, um, I'll put something up on screen to show you at what point in the video we start uh, the chat on the Miltonia Spectabilis. So I'm just going to flip you around and let's have a look at what's changed in the last few days. Okay, so we're back. So first thing I'm going to show you, and you've had a look at this once before, but it's just finally come into bloom. Now this is my little Oncidium Cinnamon Twinkle, or Twinkle Cinnamon. There's the tag for it. Now this is another one from, and I, I keep hearing different pe people saying this in different ways. Now look at the name there, Spicesotic, Spicesotic. I've heard Speciotic, Spiceotic, Spiceotic. That definitely says Spicesotic, Spicesotic. Um, just a little thing there, I don't know, maybe they pronounce it differently. I suppose if it's a made up word you can pronounce it however you want. Okay, so the Miltonia Spectabilis um, is over there, and we're going to come to that in a little while. But let's just focus on some things that have come into bloom in the last few days. So yeah, this is gorgeous. It's supposed to smell of cinnamon. I can't really smell anything. Don't know if you can. <laughs> no. Well, maybe as we as with the usual of these things. Um, Get a bit of sun on them, or I mean, maybe even the time of day makes a difference. Um, but nothing in here is getting sun on it at the moment. Even when the sun's out, it's just too shady. But it's a lovely little thing. I'm really pleased with it. It's been a long time. I've been waiting for it. Oh, and uh, if you're wondering what the noise is, it's just kicked on. We've got it's happening. The uh, humidity is dropping quite a bit because. Um, the heater is on, it keeps, keeps coming on, and overnight it's actually cost me the most. I'll just show you my records here. Now what I've been doing, um, I've actually stopped recording times and things on here, and just been doing the costs now that I've got some kind of idea of what's going on. And last night it cost me £3.42, which is by far the most, so it looks like November's going to be quite a... Um, quite heavy on the wallet so anyway I keep telling myself I can afford it but that's what you what you have to do if you want a tropical greenhouse in the middle of or in the north of the UK so yeah gorgeous plant uh, Miltoni, I keep calling it Miltoni Spectabilis uh, Oncidium Cinnamon Twinkle yeah other thing that's about to come out this is another Oncidium this is sweet sugar Again, another one that I've had well over a year. I've been waiting for it to re-bloom. So that's about to come out. I'm really looking forward to that to that one. And one I mentioned the other day, the so-called scented one. Uh, this is the one that I've been promising my daughter for, it seems like forever, that it's going to come out and smell of chocolate. And that's the Oncidium Sherry Baby. And RT, I'm just trying to figure out what RT is. I normally put RP for report. RT, what on earth? I've no idea what RT means, I can't remember. So that was useful. But whatever I did uh, to it, RT. <laughs> I 
<laughs> could just be you know me and my uh, absent mind it does happen quite a lot that but on the 12th of March in 2018 I RT'd it I don't know what that means I probably meant repot but anyway yeah I can I can actually detect a scent I mean it's gorgeous regardless of scent um, I can actually t detect a chocolatey kind of vanilla-y chocolatey smell to it um, and it may be that once I've got all these open as well um, that I you know that it, it does fill the greenhouse which is what I've been waiting for I'm promising everybody who walks past it that's what it's going to do fill the greenhouse with chocolate um, but so far I think I might have to be uh, <coughs> I don't know bringing some hot chocolate in and uh, hiding it somewhere so that people think it comes from this but it's a be it's a beautiful plant and I'm really pleased with it um, Borragera, Nelly Isla keeps doing its thing. This does, I mean, get the sun on this and this smell, this really does fill the greenhouse. That smells stunning when it uh, gets the sun on it. Still looking good. Uh, so to I'm still looking good, although it pales into insignificance compared to Rogers, but then it is only a small plant. The, the Zygo, I'm a little bit worried about because you can see this has flopped. Um, and that one has as well. It comes from this kind of offshoot here off a pseudo bulb and I was worried that when it arrived it, it, had, it had got frost on it. It was cold when it was being posted and you can see it's quite black there. I mean fortunately none of the others seem to be affected so I mean when you when you squeeze it it's still quite hard and I was hoping it was all right but I think it's had it so I might have to cut that off but the rest of it looks okay. Well, that's the risk you take when you order online uh, this time of year. Um, very untropical cyclamen, but I mean, look at it, it does look great. So it does fill a gap as well. Um, I think I did mention this frag. This is from Ed, a present from Ed. Phragmopedium Ainsworthy Eye. So I've got to keep that moist, moist he says, so I will do. I've had a little move around of things. I've put uh, this Cattleya over here. It is just a hybrid. It's gorgeous, but it, there's no name to it that I'm aware of. It just comes through as Cattleya hybrid. Um, another spicy exotic plant. The uh, Brassia still going going nicely, and I can actually detect a scent. I didn't think it was, but you get your nose up to it, and you know what it smells like to me. Uh, when you go to these National Trust stately homes and you go inside and you, I don't know what it is kind of like a musty furniture old furniture smell well that's what it smells like to me um, this Recara I don't think I mentioned this before Recara Francis Fox um, it's not flowered for me as yet and it didn't come in flower that was before I had my little policy of only buying plants in flower uh, but it has grown this growth whether that's just another pseudo bulb, it doesn't look like a spike, does it, to, to uh, anybody who's seen spikes before. And the little leaf coming in the top there, so I'm quite excited for something happening there. But, some people may have noticed over here, um, I think it was Cathy that berated me. Um, I did say that if things didn't go quite well with the cuttings, because I did some, I've got some um, streptocarpus in there and in that one as well. And I did a video on this one, the Diplodenia sandberry cuttings, which is still alive at the moment. But I said they would do better with a bit of bottom heat. Um, and I just didn't, I think I was being a bit lazy. I just didn't want to um, take my electric heater out and clean it because it hadn't been used for a while. So I've now taken it out. But alas, it's not plugged in. <laughs> because I can't I can't reach the the socket the socket is like way over there in the corner so I've had to order one of those um, you know like an extension lead which should come today so they should be very fortunate to get heated bottoms uh, over the next few hours and then hopefully that might make them root a little bit more easily um, and also this Ed had one of these, Dendrobium Noble, I did a video on this. Um, some more blooms come out on that, looking great. 
Uh, what else has changed? I don't know if I mentioned this one. This is actually uh, papyrus grass. I know it's nothing to do with orchids. Uh, it's not even tropical, I don't think. I think this one is actually a hardy version. Um, it's something like fool's or false, I think, false uh, papyrus grass. But I thought it would be cool to have some, some ancient Egypt papyrus grass. Uh, Cyperus involucratis, involucratis, tuss, it's a tuss, not a tiss, involucratis, cyperus, or cyperus involucratis, um, yeah, just thought it would be nice to have something that reminded me of ancient Egypt, because, well, it's a really interesting topic, so yeah, let's just have a look around, now this one over here that I was complaining about, that I could never get hydrated enough, the solution, Stick it in a pot like that, let the water drain through, and it does suck it up, I've found. It doesn't seem to mind, even though uh, on the information I read, so they didn't like to sit in water. Uh, I've just got to keep my eye on it, really, and make sure that it doesn't sit in it for too long. I've only just watered it, that's why it's in water at the moment. Um, but when I finish this video, I'll take it out again. Uh, another little file. This was a Mother's Day present about five years ago for my wife. Um, Again, no idea, but I think it's quite cute. Um, I mounted it because it was getting very big. It was my first, my first attempt at a mount, so it's not fantastically successful, but uh, it, it's worked, it's flowering, even though it's quite cool here in the greenhouse. It's not really going much beyond about 15 now, even when the sun's on it, it's that cold. Uh, another little update, the cyclamen. Do seem to have solved the problem with the cyclamen now, you can see. One, two, three, four, five new leaves. I hit it with everything. I uh, put the chemical through it to kill the vine weevil. I put slug pellets on top, uh, make sure it was well watered. And I did actually catch a massive slug, which I think might have been responsible. There was a slug underneath that pot there. Um, still don't know how the heck they're getting in. I suspect it's through the front door. I've done everything I can to, to you know, um, plug up any holes but at the end of the day that it's a you know it's a greenhouse door and they just don't make these these things are tight uh, I think that's probably it I've got another little pe pelagonium here about to come into flower now I know Mr Pelagonium will probably tell me I should stop that but well how can you cut blooms off I do like them uh, I seem to have solved the problem with the um, Brugmansia, that's looking better now at this time of year than it's looked all year. I did water it yesterday and it's kind of sitting in water now, which I know it doesn't like, but I've raised it up on some stones, so I might I might have to uh, lift that out and pour that water out. But I don't think, you know, the pot's sitting on, on in the water. I think it's just the, uh, the stones under there. So yeah, uh, I said I'd quickly take a look outside and have a look at the frost. If you come from tropical places, you might not see much frost. So, oh, yeah, it's cold out here. So let's just have a little look. Um, temperature at the moment, we've got two degrees. It does tend to be more frosty around the front. The back is a little bit more sheltered. And now, would you believe, <laughs> despite me clearing all the leaves up the other day, I'm creating a big sack full there, as well as two willy bins full, plenty more leaves, but you can see the frost on things. <coughs> it's not quite as frosty at the back here, it's more frosty at the front. It does look good. I don't think the plants are that frosty. No, not really. Might have to cut this bit out. It's nice when you get a hoar frost on things. Um, and you can see all the little icy frosty crystals. Okay, and we're back. So, um, just based on previous experience, before we talk about this, um, I have got, I don't know if you can see here, I still have my little wire here connected me to my microphone, so um, I'm going to have to be very careful here, I don't yank anything over, I'm sure I will at some point. Uh, still it makes for good bloopers. Uh, but I have actually ordered a wireless one, so 
by the end of today, next video, I should be uh, young and free. Well, maybe not young, but certainly free. And uh, hopefully I won't knock anything over. So, Miltonia Spectabilis. This is it. Now, this was purchased for me, or on my behalf, from um, a North, North of England Orchid Society auction. And when it came, when it arrived, it had growing in it two other plants. Now this is where I should really have prepared this earlier. So I'm going to take my mic off and I'm going to show you the two plants. So just hang on a second. Here we go. Okay, a bit of rustling while I just connect my mic back up again. Right, so what have we got? We've got that, which I don't know what it is. It's obviously some kind of fern. Um, crikey. Some weird stuff growing in it there. I don't know if you can see. Some kind of uh, fungal thing. Uh, but yeah, that was growing in it. And this one, which I do know what this one is. This one, which looks very much like uh, one of those... The one I always want to call phlebotomy. Phlebodium, I think it is. Uh, they were growing in there. Obviously not as big as they are now. Um, and what I did, rather than... Because it, it was already... It already has uh, these sheaths, for want of a better word, on them. Um, which were obviously going to be flowers. So rather than disturb it and take those plants out, I left them in, I let it flower... It took a long time to flower. It was in sheath for many months. Uh, the flowers lasted at least a month, probably more like two. Gorgeous flowers, um, like a purpley, different shades of purple, very, very fragrant, um, and it looked great. Um, but when that had finished, which would have been, uh, I've got report 719, so it would have been July this year, um, and I did this very quickly and I didn't really look it up So what I did was I, I unpotted it. I took those ferns out of it and This is what we've ended up with uh, What I should have done in retrospect It's a creeping plant Miltonia spectabilis is a species plant and it's found throughout Brazil um, It's actually quite easy if I you know everything I've done with it. I've not killed it um, it's not a difficult plant to grow, but you can see what happens. Um, it, it creates these rhizomes and then it, it creeps along, does a pseudo bulb, moves along again. Let's see if I can, there we go. Moves along again, creates another one, moves along again, creates some more growth. And it's rooting as it's going. You can just see the roots under there and some more roots under there. So what I'm going to have to do now uh, when, when I actually repotted it in July, I, in trying to take the roots of those ferns off, I pretty much destroyed any roots that were there anyway. So I then ended up wiring it all up to try and keep it still. And what I should have done really was, you know, looked at these, like for example, that piece there, and thought, well, that's clearly finished. That's probably finished as well. Snip it off and put it in wherever, you know, put it in the media wherever the roots were and that's what I'm going to do now. Um, something else to mention about it is we've got these these nice green leaves on the new shoots um, but the yellowing ones, I mean obviously they're going to yellow anyway if they're on an old pseudo bulb but uh, again like Roger was pointing out, or was pointed out to Roger, if you do have it in the sun, in too much sun it will they will go more yellow anyway so i have put it in somewhere a little bit more shady um, so just before i unpot it and have a go at sorting this mess out and i'm going to do it in the same media because it's only been there since july uh, i'm going to tell you a little bit more about it and that i've found out about it so it's a warm to cool growing epiphyte so it grows up in trees it has no problem growing on bark so if anybody has one and they want to mount it that's fine it can grow on cork as well uh, it blooms in the summer. I found that it started to produce these uh, like sheaths 
quite early on, like January time, and I'm wondering if, like, looking down here now, whether that's one. There's a couple there. Uh, but it did take a while before it bloomed. It wasn't in perfect conditions. This was before I had the tropical greenhouse. It was just in, my, in, in the old greenhouse. Um, I think I had it January, February. I had it in the conservatory, but it's very, very dark in there. It didn't really like that. So, yeah, warm to cool growing. Um, in this particular greenhouse, it, it seems to be okay. It, it's one of these that even though it might be warm to cool, you know, it doesn't mind pushing the limits a little bit. Um, it's very fragrant. It's a gorgeous plant once it, you know, once it comes into flower. This particular specimen doesn't look gorgeous at the moment. I understand that. Um, the usual thing, it likes bright but not direct sun. Bright light, not direct sun. So if you are going to put it in the sun, make sure it's shaded and be aware that the brighter the light, the yellower the leaves will go. Um, it also doesn't like deep shade either. So if the leaves go very, very dark green, you know you've probably got it too shaded. Um, it likes lots of air movement, so keep a fan on it. Uh, temperature wise it's happy up to 25 down to 13 but as I say it's quite forgiving so it'll probably push those limits on either side humidity around about 80 degrees uh, sorry 80 percent humidity uh, the media it tends to it's quite a thirsty plant especially in the summer uh, so it probably will need watering on a daily basis the kind of media that you put it in better to have something that retains a little bit of moisture rather than completely open although having said that um, the information I read did say that you could mount it and you can't get much more open than that can you so as long as you're, you're keeping it you know keeping an eye on it and not letting it dry out too much it should be fine in whatever you put it in I've got it in bark but there's also a bit of peat in there as well so it's a, not quite as open as I would normally have um, we ha it has this creeping habit where it creeps along with each new growth. Um, feeding, the usual weekly, weekly. The information I read said to feed a quarter to half strength of orchid fertilizer. So that's not even normal fertilizer. So orchid fertilizer, but not, you know, not even full strength orchid fertilizer. So again, you know, nearly everything I read on feeding orchids tells you to err more on the side of caution than to overfeed so that's what I'm going to really try and do um, I'm going to try and make sure that I flush more often and that was also in the information make sure you flush it because it can very quickly build up salts inside which it doesn't like so that's Miltonia spectabilis uh, Miltonia spectabilis and how to care for it another name for it apparently is the outstanding Miltonia um, I don't know why that, that refers to how good it is and how easy it is to grow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpot this, snip these wires off, and I'm going to have a go and see if I can make it look a little bit better than it is now. So here we go. Um, go on, while I'm on camera, I'll give this a spray just to make sure this is alcohol. I don't want anybody telling me off. Um, and what that does is it just kills any bugs on these secateurs, which really need a good clean. I'm only cutting the wires anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to cut these wires, take it out, and see what we've got. See if since July um, we've got any roots that have actually gone down into the media, because that was my problem in July. I tried all sorts of things to. <coughs> To try and get it still <laughs> well there's the answer to that one no there's no roots on that because it's fallen to pieces this is what's so amazing about orchids that they don't actually need that much and they still keep going I mean what have we got the, these roots are okay they're only tiny but they're okay um, that's gonna be tricky to decide what to do with that but it's obviously no good like that these a little bit more feels like we've got something in there so let's give it a squeeze I don't think I need those for a while let's see what we can do tell you what I'll do it over there and then we can see what's going on I mean if there are roots in here I don't think they're very far down I don't think I'll have to pull much 
I don't know. Might be surprised. And you can see I've got that quite wet. I did water it uh, pretty recently. Oh, hey. Oh yes, quite happy with that. Now we didn't have what we didn't have this. The, these are quite new. That must have happened um, since July. No, that's good. That's good news. Um, I still have a problem though, because you know to try and fit it in the pot, it's a case of well, my plan was to get rid of that, but yet yeah, that's where the roots are coming from. <laughs> which is really quite sad. And there's another little shoot coming from that really old one. Hmm. What to do? And yeah, I've got these here that really want to be in media. I wonder if, and I'm gonna do this with absolutely no experience on this whatsoever, just my own kind of feelings. If I, cut that there, I'm just going to do it before anybody shouts at me and that can go on its own it may be that I've got to produce another <coughs> another pot and stick it in another pot just cut that bit off and that not sharp enough they don't want to come some of these old bits. So we've got a new growth there. There's a new one coming there, which I've just stupidly cut off. I didn't realize that was there hiding underneath. You live and learn. So, right. I, I really don't want all like loads of separate plants I want them all in the same one I learnt that early on um, I think a traditional UK gardener will look at a shrub or a perennial and think oh yeah I can I can split that and then I'll have two of them and both of them will bush out but when you've got orchids they don't you, you go and split them up and what you end up with is one not very impressive looking plant and another very small insignificant plant that'll probably take 12 years to flower so that and that these two really old ones I don't think I need they've got like one miserable root on there and I don't think that's going to be any use so I'm cutting that off that's gone these have got all the roots so I'm gonna to have to keep that that's got a new growth there that's got a new growth that I've just cut it's only the very tip off don't tell anybody so that could go in, that's possible. That could definitely go in there and be rooted, be stable. So that's that piece. This piece has all sorts going on. That could definitely go. It's not going to be very stable. I'm going to have to try and pin that down. It's like if I can get rid of any bits. That has got some roots, but this is the this is the awkward piece. Um Yikes. On earth, it's too, it's so kind of spreading, it would take up the whole pot. I'm not sure. That's got a new growth there, nearly snipped that one off as well. So, there's a lesson for anybody, lesson for me anyway. Before you cut any dead bits, make sure there's nothing underneath them. imagine lots of people knowingly nodding who's done it before look see new pieces under there a lot a lot nice new growths under there so that is perfectly fine this piece but it's just such an awkward shape and I've not got a bigger pot it's a conundrum Uh, hmm. I want it in the media. I 
think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and make that separate and do that in a separate pot. Um, and then we'll have two. It's not what I wanted because I'd rather have all the flowers together. But that just will not go in this pot. It needs something quite shallow, really. Um, but this is this is the pot that it came in. So I think I can get that one in and that one in and then I'm going to look for another pot and at least I know they're going to be in. Really, you know, if it is a creeping plant, it's probably better to be in something like wider and more shallow than this kind of pot. So maybe that's what I have to do. I'm still not really happy with this. I think what I'll do is I'll pot it up as it is. I'll pot these two up. I'm going to keep that out separately. It won't die. I can keep it uh, keep it moist. I can just put it in a tray or something. Actually, a tray would be ideal, wouldn't it? A gravel tray. It would have to be a, a tray with holes in it and then into a gravel tray. I've, I've got one somewhere. I'm not sure what I've done with it. I'll have to have a look. Yeah, so I'm going to need something wide, I think. Something wide, something quite uh, with holes in it, quite shallow, and I think then this will be ideal, kind of creeping along and flowering. It can certainly look different. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So yeah, I think that's it. I can't, I can't go any further because um, it just it was not going to fit in that kind of a pot and it needs it, it wants it clearly wants to be creeping along and moving along um, I suppose mounting it might be something I could do it could be mounted couldn't it that might look nice uh, it would certainly solve that creeping up problem um, however I don't have anything to mount it on, so that's something else. So I've got a decision to make. I either buy some cork to mount it on, or I try and put it in some kind of wide but shallow pot. Um, and that's how we're going to move forward. So I think we'll leave it at that. So that's Miltonia Spectabilis. It's uh, an inconclusive video, but I think it, you know, this is this is all part of the learning process. Um, at least I've been able to find a little bit out about it and I'm quite sure that we'll solve this problem and move on and we'll get some nice blooms this year from it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'm just going to flick you around to, to finish off. Okay, so that's that's Miltonia Spectabilis, that was Miltonia Spectabilis. Um, and we're, we're a little bit further on than we were before. At least, we, you know, I know what I want to do with it now. Um, you've learnt a little bit about it, I hope. And if anybody has any comments or anybody has any advice for me, then I'd, I'd love to hear from you because uh, it's the first time I've ever grown this. And as you know, I'm very new to this, to the orchid world. Um, I found out what I could off the internet, but of course, you know, it's only experience that helps you to really get to the bottom of these things. I've told you about what happened, what my experience with, uh, has been with it over the last 12, 18 months. Um, and you know what I'm going to do with it now. So by all means, comment on there. You've had a look at the frost. You've had a look at the updates in the greenhouse. So I think that'll do for now. And please, if you're not already subscribed, click the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Okay, back again with a quick update on the Miltonia Spectabilis. Um, after everything I said, this is what I've done. I'm just flicking around. Yeah, okay, so what I've actually done, um, I thought to myself, well, you know, I've spent an awful lot of money on, well, on everything to do with the, <laughs> to do the greenhouse recently. And I thought, well, okay, I, I do think it'd probably be better in a shallow, you know, a shallow wide pot, but I haven't got one and I don't intend going buying any at the moment. Um, I thought, right, we'll stick it in these pots. I'm quite happy to have two of these, actually. I think they look okay as they are now. They certainly look better than they did before. They're more stable than they were before, so they should be able to get some roots actually into the media. There's not many of them going off out over the pot. There's that one, and probably that'll put some roots down there, but at least they could be able to get to the media. 
whereas before it had absolutely no chance because they were like right out here. So uh, it'll do for temporary measure. Um, by temporary, I mean you know at least at least a good six months. I might even leave them another year before I repot them, uh, and then see if I can get some wider pots for that. But for now, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to get a label in there, get some, uh, get a tray and some stones underneath to make sure it drains through. Give it a good water. Give that a water too. Um, and then let's see how that develops. It's a, it's a beautiful species and I'm quite happy to have two plants and let's hope we get lots of blooms on them as well. I think it'll be happier like this because if you can get its, its roots down into the media, they're not just all her roots, um, I think it, you know, it'll, it'll, we'll start to see some benefits from that. So that's it for today and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got anything to tell me, please do tell me. I'm, I'm very, very keen to learn from everybody else's growing experience. I know there's a lot more um, experienced people at growing orchids on, on in my subscriber group at this particular time. So I'd love to hear from you and uh, we'll leave it at that for now. So hopefully see you on the next one. Bye.